what do you think would happen if all the money in the world was split equally among everyone? Without a doubt in my mind, I can tell you that it would end up in the exact same hands as before. And it's not because of financial literacy. It's not because of the monopolization of assets. It's not because of saving, budgeting, or investing. They do serve their part, but as always, you know it's to do with the unseen. There's always something else. And the one thing that the world's richest know that you don't is money is a spiritual game. Now, if money is a game that you want to stop losing, then I suggest you cut my digital course on the spiritual science of money called the metaphysical money manual and start winning like hundreds of others already are now until you're willing to entertain the idea that money is a spiritual game you will never truly be able to experience the abundance that you and your family deserve but don't worry by the end of this video it will all make sense and you will possess the qualities needed to become a money magnet as god intended why is money spiritual now what does spiritual actually mean it's almost become a buzzword used by many but it's actually understood by few spiritual doesn't mean holy or good because there's bad spiritual stuff out there that is very real Spiritual is simply a reference to the unseen, the underlying energy behind reality hidden from your eyes. Everything is energy. Everything is made from matter. Matter is a collection of particles. Particles are simply made out of subatomic particles, which are the materialization of wave potentials. Now, wave potentials are another name for consciousness, and consciousness at its core is energy. Money itself being energy, as I explained earlier, means it is part of God. Now, religions may argue on the identity of God foolishly, but the one thing they all have in common is the idea that God created everything. All energies are part of the God force. You can think about this in the hermetic law of polarity. Now, money being an energy means it is part of the God force. Now, the way that I define spirituality is the degree to which you can integrate yourself and become aligned with God or the God force or the universal life energy or the infinite intelligence or Allah or Yahweh, Jehovah or the creator, whatever term your ego prefers. The creator being infinite means abundance is reflective of the creator's real nature. Look around at actual nature. More fruits are grown than we can eat, so much so that God created a purpose for fruits that we actually don't eat to go back into the ground, feed back into the cycle. Now, as a creation of the creator, you have that divine spark within you. And that means abundance is your birthright. Now, due to the technological advancement of humanity, money can be seen as the scale that determines how close you are to abundance reflected in your bank account. What is money? Is it paper? Is it numbers on a screen? If I was that kind of guy, I'd give you a whole historical breakdown on how money is actually made from nothing, but I shall let you read The Creature from Jekyll Island yourself. One of the world's greatest yet hidden secrets is that money isn't paper or numbers on a screen. That's what they told you to keep you in the loop of the realm of effect so you actually never get it. Money is energy. On a macro level, money is simply the exchange of value. Whether a pair of Yeezys, a trim, or a Big Mac, money is exchanged for value. This is the economy. Deconstructing value on a deeper level, hidden at the heart of value, is always emotion. Think about it. There's not a single exchange of money in the world that is not to gain some type of emotion. You buy food to experience the emotions of a soothed hunger or cravings or whatever it is. You buy an iPhone to feel a part of something. You buy a jacket because you like it, but most importantly, it makes you feel something. It's all about emotions and feelings. You can literally examine every single purchase you've made from the smallest to the largest. It's all about extracting some type of emotions, whether subtle, or immense. Deconstructing emotion is where you're exposed to the real truth because emotion is just energy emotion which emits an energetic vibration which we call a signature. The illuminating truth is actually that it's not about emotions or feelings, it's about energy. Every transaction, every exchange of money is an energy exchange and at its core that's all money represents, energy don't believe me that money's an energy it's been hidden in your face your whole life think about it money is known as a currency current is a flow of energy whether water or air you put your money in a bank on the side of a river where water stops or energy stops is called a river bank we even say let's make it rain we even say we're swimming in money we either say we're drowning in money the way that we talk about money from the beginning has always been an energy it's just always been hidden in your face 
Now let's take off the false lens that you've been viewing money with your whole life because money has little to do with what you do in this world, but it has everything to do with what you do within. It's called income because it's a game of the inner world. The reality that you experience is nothing more than an effect of a cause and the cause is on a mental plane. Now I spoke about this many a times, but you can check out my video, The Three Planes of Existence. Now, everything in reality, every situation, every circumstance, every condition is only a shadow of the mind direct one-to-one -one mirror reflection as within as without so you must apply the same spiritual basis when it comes to money because it's all interlinked and interconnected money being something in reality means that it is part of the effect phase which means that the money you have will always be a shadow a direct one-to-one -one mirror reflection of the mind this is why budgeting saving and investing will only take you so far because they are all in the realm of effect does it make sense to change an effect by changing an effect of course not. This is why you must elevate your mind to the higher planes of existence to focus on the cause which will forever be your mind. Money is just an effect. That's all. With this truth in mind, it allows you to play an entirely different game to the one you've been playing your whole life, which means that the prices are way different. Here's the thing. 98% of the world see money in the exact same way you do, and that's as a survival mechanism. Question. What do you use money for? It's most likely that you'll say to buy food, pay the bills and rent. And that means that you perceive money as a mechanism for survival, just like the 98%. Now, when you see money as a survival mechanism, this state of consciousness locks you into operating from the basal ganglia, which is known as your reptilian brain, and it can be associated with your most primal self. It's the oldest part of your brain. And here's the secret about your perception towards money. Whatever you see it as is exactly what it will be. Your perception, the way that you see money is directly fed into your projection of reality. Now you can check out my last video, The Sacred Power of Perception, because you'll find now that your perception equals projection, and this creates a reality loop where a lot of people never make it out. How can you ever expect to encounter abundance and the universe universal flow of money while you're perceiving money as something that can only help you survive. As I said, whatever you see it as is exactly what it will be. Money will start flowing to you and even chasing you the moment you redefine what it is to you. False money beliefs are the foundation of poverty. Until they are exercised from your mind, you will be haunted by poverty. Your beliefs are interconnected with the first hermetic universal law, which is the universe is entirely mental, meaning your universe is molded by your beliefs. Think about your money beliefs like being the blueprint of your bank account. Poverty is a disease of the mind and the beliefs you have about money sustain the illness. Poverty can be seen as you being out of the universal flow of abundance, which is your true cosmic state. This is your birthright. And these false money beliefs are parasites that are sucking you from being in that energy. Now, I'm going to give you two of the most common false money beliefs, which I've seen in people and ones that I've also had myself. Number one, poverty is normal. Now, the secondary school that I went to, we were so disassociated from money that if you bought lunch or dinner, we thought you were rich. We were like, what? This guy is balling. Now, we normalized not having money, which means it was cool for us not to eat. Now, this is the thing. Whatever you normalize enters your subconscious the easiest because there is no resistance. And the normalization of poverty allows the disease to strengthen its roots in your mind. You have to see poverty as being an indication of being out of the alignment of God. Now, poverty being normal signals to the universe that wealth is crazy to you. And whatever you deem crazy will always run away from you due to the frequency almost becoming some sort of repellent. Poverty is not normal. And if it is, then it shall be for you. Number two, poverty is holier than wealth. Man, growing up in the church, I couldn't even tell you, but I'll say this once. There is nothing noble about being poor. Being poor doesn't make you closer to God. Being poor doesn't grant you easier access to heaven. Being poor doesn't make you better than somebody who's rich. Being poor doesn't give you extra heaven points. The whole idea of being poor linked to spiritual reward was a scam given to the masses centuries ago when the royals and priests bathed in wealth while the masses bathed in poverty and began to question the authority. Those in power would say, don't worry, you shall be compensated for your struggle in heaven. This is literally how it happened. 
Now, unfortunately, due to the consciousness being passed down generations, many of us still kind of have this idea in mind that it's better to be poor than rich for whatever reason. Despite all the struggle we go through, it, it makes no sense. Now, there are 10 other false money beliefs blocking you from the universal flow of money coming to you. And the moment you take these off, everything changes. Now, if you want the rest, cop the mere physical money manual. Man, I'm loving these shameless plugs. Social contracts. What's the best way to control somebody? Is it fear? Is it love? The unexpected answer will always shock you because it's not fear, it's love. Love is the easiest way to control someone. You are more manipulated by love than you are by fear. The little child you once were had minimal fear. This is why you see babies pick up spiders and play with snakes. But what that baby does have is the desire for love and approval. You cried to be held, you cried for attention, you cried for affection, and rejection is a fear of the opposite of love. Love is the reason you are reading this right now. You want to attract more money to take care of your loved ones, right? As humans, we internalize approval as love, which is why we are so readily to conform for approval. Did you ever think that love was stopping you from attracting more money? It's all in the agreement that you signed up for when you became a member of society. Wait, you didn't know you signed a, a social contract? Do you even know what a social contract is? A social contract is the agreement you signed up for to remain accepted by those that you love. The purpose of a social contract is to keep you in a low state of mind like the other 98%. Your ancestors survived by sticking together so acceptance is life or death to your animal brain. Acceptance is conformity in the best ways and in the worst ways so it's your first instinct. Think about it like this. Imagine you're walking outside and you're in town and then everybody just starts looking up at the sky. What are you going to do? You're going to look up. Think about it in school. When you got better grades than your friends, you felt guilty. And let's say you and your friend came out of an exam and your friend's like, yo, I think I failed that exam. If you didn't do good either, you'd feel great. Something so small is messing up your ability to attract money. That biological desire to be accepted creates an unconscious suppression of your success, which money is a metric of. That releases a frequency that repels money because you know that Money means that you're going to be different from everybody. And the truth is you want to be the same. You want to be able to relate. Being different to your animal brain is death. So that's why it's easy for you to stay the same, even though, and I know this, you have potential. Now it's time for you to break the social contract because if you don't, you'll be kept in the same frequency and the same reality as everybody else. Make the decision, accept that elevation. Elevation and success is social suicide, but you have to get comfortable with it because if it ain't you, Who's going to change your life? Who's going to change your family's life? There is no other option except elevation of mind or death. I've got another question for you. How much do you have in your internal bank account? You can never have more money externally than you do internally. And when you do, the universe will punish you through energetic equilibrium. Think about people that win the lottery, right? Their external bank account exceeds their internal bank account. So the universe, eventually, you'll end up hearing somebody who won 80 mil lost it and everybody will be like, yo, they're stupid. How did that have energetic equilibrium? As within, as without. Your income is determined by what is within. Income is truly a game of the inner. This is where your attention should be. As you grow your internal bank account, your external bank account will also grow. This is how you grow your internal bank account. And please, if you grasp anything from this video, let it be this. Abundance isn't about how much you have in your bank account. It's determined by how much you feel within. Abundance isn't a number. And if you disagree, then define it for me right now. Then ask your friend what abundance is to them. And what you'll see is that they have different definitions of abundance. Abundance, what it really and truly is, is a feeling. It's a game of security, serene confidence, and unshakable inner calm. That's what abundance truly is. And the more you begin to generate and cultivate that feeling of security, serene calmness, and confidence towards your abundance, then that is exactly what will grow your internal bank account. And by nature of how reality works, your external bank account will equally grow. I saved the most important part for the end. None of the information I said before will make a difference if you have a low self-worth. Your self-worth is the ceiling of the maximum amount of money you can attract. No manifestation technique will be able to overpower a low sense of self. You can do affirmations, you can do vision boards, you can do scripting, you can do, you can eat crystals, you can be a vegan, you can, you know, say grand rising as many times as you want. Nothing will work with a low sense of self-worth. 
Do not assume your self-worth to be what you think you deserve, but it's the truest emotional reflection of what you feel you deserve. And oftentimes what we think and what we feel aren't aligned. Every person from my hood thinks they deserve more money, but they don't feel worth the money that they want. And emotion is everything. Go watch my video, The Missing Law of Emotion. The only way to increase your self-worth is by careful calibration that you deserve nothing less than your highest potential. And you arrive at this conclusion by imagining what your life would be like if you had materialized everything that you want, but simultaneously what it would be like if you didn't. Instead of thinking, what if it doesn't work? Switch it to what if it does work and be consumed by that because you are a creation of God, a manifestation of God. And as a being with the divine spark of God, it is audacious to think you deserve any less than your highest potential. Once again, nothing that I said in this video will matter or work without your self-worth being lifted. With your newfound knowledge, you now possess the seeds of abundance. All you have to do now is water it because in the same way within a seed is the potential of the fruit you have the seed of God and its infinite abundance and potential within you. All you have to do now is water it.